right, so we're still reading our story about biomimicry. So how bio is life, mimic is to copy. So it's like the study of how we, I mean, like we're co humans can copy nature or things in the, in the world to benefit it. So it says, one thing we can do to learn from nature, nature is, a great, is great at making the things it needs to survive too. And it does so very simply and with little waste. A clam creates its shell with nothing but seawater and food, and the tallest tree in the world can move water from its roots to its top branches with energy from the sun and no water pump. Sorry, with the sun and no water pump. Any waste becomes a resource for food organism, for another organism, such as a dead tree becoming food, shelter, and energy for hundreds of living things. All of these different parts of an ecosystem work together in a sustainable way without using up or damaging resources. It has taken many thousands of years to create these sustainable environments and each living thing and its adaptations plays a certain role. So it like talks about mushrooms and moss, how they grow on a fallen tree. Through the science of biomimicry, we have a chance to see how these sustainable environments survive and how the organisms within them work together. Through them, we can learn and adapt how we live and make things we use to help, our, to help solve our challenges and live in a more sustainable way. So this look right here, it says solar ivy acts like artificial leaves turning sunlight into energy as a tree does to the left. It's funny because trees can do this, but they also take out harmful things in the air, which I'm sure they don't do. Future of biomimicry. Artificial leaves. Trees use sunlight to produce energy through a process called photosynthesis. Scientists to, scientists are working on creating artificial trees with leaves that use sunlight and wind to produce electricity. One day these trees could produce enough energy to allow us to burn less fossil fuels. Hmm. Spider. That is creepy. This microscopic view of a spider's spinning of a spider spinning silk shows how spiders, ha, such as the funnel spider, create their webs. That was the, that's the back part making silk. Ew. If you ever accidentally walked into a spider's web, no, because that would freak me out. You know how sticky and strong the silk is. In fact, scientists have proven that spider silk is about three times as strong as steel. What? Now they're trying to figure out just how a spider makes silk. It's not a simple process. And then create it themselves. The artificial spider silk would be an incredibly strong light fabric that na that's natural and could have many different uses. that. Antarctic ice fish survived in waters below freezing because of a natural antifreeze in their blood. They can also take in oxygen through their skin. Huh. Fish antifreeze. Many species of fish, such as those living in the Antarctic at the bottom of the ocean, can live in a temperature below freezing. While this ex is extreme cold would kill most creatures, these fish survive thanks to different kinds of antifreezes in their body, in their bodies. If scientists can determine how these antifreezes are made and work, they could discover a variety of uses, including organ transplants and ocean exploration. Huh. I don't know about that. I mean, that's good, I guess. Kind of creeps me out. Huh. Look at that. Natural plastics. People use tons of plastic every year, and the way we make plastic uses great uses great amounts of energy and creates huge amounts of waste. However, scientists have found that some kinds of microorganisms 
make the building blocks of plastic in their cells. If scientists can figure out how these microorganisms begin to make plastics, they can mimic that process and make plastics using less energy with much less waste. I just read that whole part without even showing you. <laughs> Sorry. Mama and a baby eat medicinal plants. A chimpanzee and her baby eat medicinal plants. So they're plants that would serve as medicine. Maybe she has an upset stomach or isn't feeling well. Who knows? This is medicine. Other animals have been surviving in the wild for thousands of years. And like us, they find they sometimes get sick. By seeing which plants and other things that animals, such as chimpanzees, use to treat themselves, we can discover new medicines and treatments for our own illnesses. Conclusion. Two kids are looking at a dragonfly. Well, it looks like you're squeezing it. I don't know if it'll probably make it after that exp exploration. Just a thought. Conclusion. We still have a lot to learn about nature and how things can help us create new and better things as well as sustain life. Not only ours, but that every other life form on Earth. Humans, as a species, are facing many challenges, some easy and some very difficult. As we try to solve these problems, it might be helpful to take a look outside. The next time you're playing in the park, walking in the forest, or doing anything in nature, stop and take a look around. Notice the many living things, with each with its own personal role to play in making every part of the environment work, including yourself. The most interesting and efficient solutions to our challenges may be right under our noses, waiting to be discovered through the science of biomimicry. All right. So... Again, I don't know what I did with my science journal, so I'm sticking with pieces of paper. So today I'm going to put week nine, day four, bio, mimicry. Underline that. And I'm going to put my name on here because this will have to go in my journal. All right. I'm going to write about the spider silk one because I don't really like spider silk, but if they could help us come up with a way to like, you know, that's a strong steel. Plus it's like Spider-Man. Who doesn't want to know that? Me personally, I think it's pretty awesome. So scientists, have proven. Spider silk. Oopsie, sorry. Is about three times stronger than steel. Yeah. That's crazy. Two. Mike is a question. How would they make a spider silk Cut up spiders to 
to study their enzymes. I wonder. I mean, I don't know how else you would do it. You gotta, you gotta cut them up. I mean, that's like coming out from them. And even though like spider silk could be pretty strong, that's fascinating. I don't know. So I probably have to cut them up. This is the one part I actually have a question about. It says, if scientists can determine how these antifreezes are made and work, they could discover a variety of uses, including organ transplants and ocean exploration. How would knowing, how would keeping something from freezing work? How would, how would animal antifreeze help with organ origin transplants I just don't know they don't really say I'll have to look them on this stuff up And then, one to four. I know a lot of medicine <coughs> from. Plants can be helpful when used right. I know a lot of this, but. I wonder may have to test it to make sure. on animals before humans. Number five. I am glad science looks at nature. For help with some our problems. I'm glad. <laughs> 